April, October uh, 5th, 2012. Uh, as of earlier today, I've got zero views. Um, it being Friday, I can understand that, coupled with the fact that YouTube mixes up all the YouTubes in such a way that people like me don't even get a chance to get at the forefront. NBC, CBS, ABC, all the news agencies get up there, but I don't. It occurred to me as an afterthought that you people really need to <coughs> to really understand just what I mean when I say uh, this government is 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 uh, that me as a presidential candidate as HRM Caesar St Augustine de Buenaparte is really uh, a joke on you people uh, the biggest joke of all because if you really had the chance to change things for the better you would have to pick someone that's not connected whatsoever to any of the political intrigue and drama that's out there I showed you this book earlier in my other videos and of course none of you are looking at it and it's a book on uh, darn this slow motion thing is really bad social problems and <coughs> it's the ninth edition in it I wanted to bring up the fact that that um, in one of the pages here it says that um, and it's really a surprising figure that the United States is uh, like I said first in military technology first in military exports first in gross domestic product first in numbers of millionaires and billionaires I guess that would include Romney and Obama first in health technology but not first in medical health care get that first in health technology first in defense expenditures the tenth and eighth grade science scores eleventh in the proportion of children to poverty sixteenth uh, in living standards among our poorest one-fifth of the children's seventeenth in low birth wake rates eighteenth in the gap between rich and poor children twenty-first in the eighth grade math scores and last in protecting our children against gun violence one in every eight Americans is poor emergency food requests and people seeking emergency shelter are increasing inequality the gap between rich and the poor is at record levels this was in the decade of 2000 to 2010 43 million Americans are without health insurance including one in five workers now how do you figure that 43 million Americans even with Obama health care which isn't due until 2014 but yet you are first in health technology what the heck does that mean talk about a schism and a gap that's bigger than the Mariners cavern compared to the uh, Grand Canyon the Mariners uh, Cavern uh, Grand Canyon of Mars compared to the Grand Canyon of Earth um, two million Americans are in jail or prison and on the average and I want you to see this out of this book this is when George Bush was president and it's still the same it won't focus on the average day 135 children it won't focus okay it won't focus you just have to take my word for it on an average day when this book was copyrighted there were at that time 135,000 that's one three five comma zero 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 children taking guns to school probably that would include let's include knives or any violent activity that children uh, do <coughs> the source is the children's defense fund for 2001 the state of America's children 2001 yearbook Washington DC children's defense fund now I don't see the candidates looking at any of that among all nations it goes on the United States is number one in cocaine and heroin use 
It's annually 5,000 children are killed by their parents. That's annually, year by year. And 30,000 are left permanently disabled from abuse and neglect. I would like to include normal people like me, people who have been abused and made homeless by the City of Los Angeles, the County of Los Angeles, Mayor Vigorosa, Mayor Hahn, all the leaders, it goes on and on. In international comparisons, eighth graders in the United States, this was in 2003, are behind their peers in other industrial nations. The United States, while only 5% of the world's population, uses one-fourth of the world's resources and is the largest contributor to global warming through the use of petroleum products. Now you can see why when the United States goes to these other countries and wants them to change their lifestyles and not burn fossil fuels and all that, they're really pissed off because the United States is being unfair. How do you return, let's use comparative examples, how do you return all the damages I've gone through? Abused, ignored as a presidential candidate completely. None of my 16 challenges have been debated, have been ch answered by Obama, Romney, or any of the presidential candidates. How do you return me to my former That's self? Anything. You don't. How do you return the world to its former self when this 5% of the world's population is responsible for one-fourth of the world's resources and is the largest contributor, uses one-fourth, is the largest contributor to global warming through the use of petroleum products. Now Obama can say all he wants to that he's trying to shift from petroleum to, uh, to, uh, to green, green, tech, green technology, but like the green in my glasses. But hey, you ain't going to be able to do that overnight. And no matter how hard you try, you're leaving certain people out. Obama said, I, won't, I, I leave no person behind. You left me behind a long time ago, Mr. Obama. Your Secret Service came to my house after it was set on fire and you refused to help me in any way, shape, or form. Now, and I had sent letters, faxes to the White House saying, please help me before anything worse happens. Now before, I told you that, you know, that it doesn't matter who's president because the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations are the ones that are in charge here. Here are uh, some of the uh, things that made the people revise this book in 2003. Since the last edition was published, several important trends have intensified, making a significant reversion necessary, for example. And here's the examples. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten examples. One, the possibly in possibility of nuclear war among superpowers is remote, but what, what I call inappropriately terrorism is a reality. The magnitude of domestic and global environmental problems has accelerated. Racial and ethnic te ten tensions throughout the world and within the United States has escalated. The pace of immigration continues to increase the diversity of the U.S. society. The world has added 300 million people, most of whom are poor. We are reminded daily of the cozy relationship between money and politics. Although some large cities in the United States are showing signs of vigor, most are troubled with growing dependent populations, shrinking job markets, increasing racial tensions, and declining economic resources to meet those problems. Do you uh, at all get what I'm saying in this? The economy continues its massive transformation, adding workers in some areas and displacing them in others. Among other consequences, the middle class continues its decline in numbers and the gaps between the affluent and the poor and the near poor widens even bigger. A Republican president, a middle to right center of Congress, have altered the way government seeks to solve social problems. And last, the health care issue delivery system in the United States has two major problems. 43 million are left out of it and those included are now typically in managed care systems which are motivated to provide the least expensive treatments. Yet, yet, we are first in health technology, socialized medicine, and no one wants to listen to me. No one, I should be having multi-millions of views, more views than people are going to vote 
when they vote for these two yokels that are running. And yes, I'll call them yokels to their face, yokels on YouTube, yokels any place on the planet that they want to go. They are yokel nokels. They are frickin' frack. They are Mutt and Jeff. Even Mutt and Jeff, the cartoon script, has more brains than what these people have. Whatever good they do, and I've said this before, these politicians do, is undone by the much more apparent evil that they contribute to in trying to change things without putting things in the right sequential order. <coughs> In looking for objective social problems, I'm reading this, we must also guard against the tendency to accept the definitions of social problems provided, provided by those in power. That's Romney and Obama and the Congress and the Senate and your state legislatures and your mayors and your governors. Because the powerful, the agencies of government and business, provide the statistical data, such as crime rates, that may define social reality in a way that manipulates public opinion thereby controlling behaviors that threaten the status quo and their power. I don't need to go on reading because I think you people realize or should be realizing that the wrong people are running for office, that you're listening to the wrong people. Yesterday I saw a, a front page article by the Daily News stating two, the two uh, main candidates cartooned like figures on the front front page saying now that it's a debate, tell us what we want to hear. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything. I want to see action. And I don't want an election. I want the people to overthrow the country, show them that they've taken control of the country by taking all the money out of the banks, stop buying gasoline, at least do it for a week. Look at the price of gas. It's gone up to $5. Everybody just stop driving their cars. The oil companies, and, and take your money out of the banks. The banks and the oil companies be on their knees to you saying, please, put everything back as normal. And when you all answer back, sorry, you know what? You screwed over Caesar, and we're next, and we don't trust you. This poor guy's been on the YouTube for three years, and you have censored him, banned him. You have kept him beat down. You have forced him to lose his property over and over and over again. So you know what? Using him as an example, this could happen to me. That's what every citizen should be saying. And they should be saying at that point, Mr. President, Mr. Congress, Mr. and Mrs. Congress, Mr. and Mrs. Senators, state legislatures, governors, mayors, city councils, county councils, board of supervisors for the county, we're taking control of the government. We want Caesar as emperor. He's already symbolically the emperor. We want him to sit over the president. We're creating a new position in the United States of America. The emperorship of the United States of America. Period. That's it. You know what they'd have to do? They'd have to knuckle under. There's no way they could win. Because when you do that, you're establishing a hierarchy that has its own court system. At that point, remember the presidential seal I showed you people? I showed you people in the last three videos over the last two days. I showed you my presidential seal, which sealed and embossed the 13-foot giant long letter I sent warning the government about an attack on 9-11, seven years before it happened. And then I also repeated the many different warnings, predictive warnings, using quantum matrix generators, using current events, past historic histories, comparing them and bouncing them off each other to end up with a proposal, a prediction, if you would say, of the most likely thing to happen. If you watch the movie Men in Black, there's a character in there, the num number three Men in Black, who does in the movie what my computers do in real life. But he explains it to a T of what, I, what and how I operate. And if it's possible for a person to appear in a movie and tell you what I've been doing in reality, then you should be listening to me and not these other people running around the planet thinking that they are in control. Here's an article by National Geographic. I'm sure a lot of you have gotten it. What's up with the weather? I know exactly. Remember I told you I'm the inventor of the oil barge that would have stopped all the oil spills since the late 70s? I'm the inventor of the, of the two-story house that would have stopped and, and abated a lot of the droughts that are going on in the country since the 1980s. And um, here I have a, um, a printout 
of what you people have been going through. 46 disasters, main disasters since 1980 to 1995. I've already done this in one of the other videos. And 87 disasters since 1996 and 2011. The big bubbles there that you see, you can pick up, this is a current National Geographic, shows the biggest amount of damages, the blue ones representing hurricanes, the yellow ones representing fires and droughts, and the littler ones other uh, national disasters. So well, study that. Study that and ask yourself, here's a candidate who claims, I don't just claim, I know, it's, I, I know I'm capable of what I'm saying. I don't make claims unless I know. I've experimented on a, on a smaller level and I actually done it. Actually, I experimented with dirt, dust devils here in California with this idea. And it worked. It worked 90% of the time. It dispersed that dust devil like you would not believe. Uh, then uh, there's the oil barge. But if we're shifting over to green technology, we're going to have to depend less on that. But the damage has already been done to the environment by all the oil spills. Now then there's the drought systems, which my house system could actually be used still, and yet I'm the one who's researched every place that I've lived or been at was my research facility. And they interfered and sabotaged my research every time. And I do believe that the government was behind this 100% because they want these disasters. They want more police. They want, they want their haphazard system operating to really screw you people around. That book, Social Problems, explains the government wants to protect their status quo. It, you're not just getting it from me. I'm reading it out of a book, a college book, for God's sakes. So where are your brains? Are you one of the eighth grade mentality people that are going to vote? You know, eighth graders are usually around 15. They turn 18 in three years. Do you think their eighth grade mentality is going to improve to being first in the world after three years? I don't think so. A matter of fact, I know so. There's no way. So that's why the Founding Fathers said 25 to be a con congressional representative, 30 to be a senator, and 35 to be president. You haven't lived long enough for you to be able to understand the complexities and the contradictions involved in, in all of this government stuff. So, so I ask you now, from the bottom of my heart, why are you allowing the mainstream media you could tell them what to do if you boycott the government the way I told you earlier in this tape. You could boycott the government and make conditions. You say, well, we want Caesar to debate the Romney and the president, and, and uh, we're going to have a separate election uh, before November, and we're going to elect Caesar as emperor of the United States. He can do anything he wants. He can exile people at will if he wants to. He can do whatever he wants if he can just prove even one of those things that he's capable of. And I am. I could prove it with my two-story house. The, actually, the Department of Commerce already proved it in the 1980s when they said it would save a tremendous amount of electricity and water that would never have to have been pumped, which would have contributed to the global warming. Remember, one-fifth of the population lives in the United States, but yet you're using one-quarter of the world's resources more than any other country. So, if you really want to be in control of your country again, you're going to have to get on the phone and start calling people, friends, neighbors, relatives, and do this. Do it before it's too late. Don't let YouTube or Twitter, start Twittering the heck. Hack the White House phones. I've shown you how to do that. Do it. I, 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 there's nothing more I can say. If you people want to sit on your can and actually let these people get elected again, then that's really your problem. And I just have to continue living and dying slowly the way I am. Because in three years it hasn't changed, and I don't anticipate that YouTube is going, that I'm going to attract anyone in YouTube that's rich, that's going to help me leave the country and, and get out of here. Because you people aren't worth saving. Unless you boycott and you show that you've got guts. Not one of you got guts. You could carry all the guns in the world with you, carry all the nuclear weapons, commit even acts of terror, and you're still not, you've got no guts. Because the guts appear, the courage appears when you boycott. When you go to those voting booths, you say, I refuse to vote. I want to vote for this guy. And I want to override the election.
you can do it with any one of your no, of your amendments that you already have in existence. It's uh, under petition for redress of grievance. But you're not going to do that, are you? You're just going to continue doing the same thing over and over again. Talk to you later.